Since the success of Pokemon, many anime have tried to incorporate some form of monster battling system, but in my eyes none was more successful than Beyblade. In the 2000s they seemed to be everywhere, but this seems to be the case with the new generation. But do they still hold up? Let's see if they're as good as you remember. For those who are not in the know, Beyblade is a franchise that focuses around spinning tops, with the term Beyblade actually being inspired by traditional Japanese spinning tops known as Beigoma. Beyblade was first introduced in Japan in 1999, releasing with both the toy line as well as a manga. The hope here is that it would take a share of the market Pokemon created, with the two main characters from the manga, Titan and Kai, being based off red and blue. Beyblade even debuted in a video game months before the official release, with it almost acting as a market test and prototype for the franchise. But it was two years after this, in 2001, when the original anime began to air. And then a year later, in 2002, with the help of Hasbro, Beyblade finally saw an international release. At the moment, there are currently four generations of Beyblade. Plastic Gen, Metal Gen, Burst Gen, and Beyblade X. But I'll go over these in part 2 where I'll be covering the toys, but for now, let's look at the anime. First episode is mediocre. If this was my first introduction to Beyblade, I feel like it would have taken some brain cells away. The voice acting is awful, most of the characters aren't likeable, and the plot feels non-existent. To begin with, the way how they introduced the grandpa feels oddly weird. I think he's meant to have this cool, hippie energy, but it just kind of falls flat. He seems like the local crackhead who's trying to get street cred from the local teens, but instead he's getting pity points. Then there's Tyson. This character is the only one that's actually introduced in a normal way, and you know his goals from the outset, but he just kind of feels like an Ash Ketchum wannabe. Kenny and Dizzy have no introduction other than just barging into the situation. And I hate how horny the laptop is. Does someone just find out about internet porn, or did they want to cram their cock into a USB slot? Either way, it's weird. Excuse me, Kenny. But why don't you introduce me to your cute little friend? We also learn very little about the bully. Also, what the fuck is wrong with Andrew? Is that skinwalker or the rake? On top of this whole mess of characters, the plot feels non-existent. With the whole Dragoon thing, it's very clearly they wanted to do something like a legendary Pokemon, like in the first episode of that anime where Ash sees Ho-Ho. Except in Pokemon, there's not a ton of focus on Ho-Ho being a legendary Pokemon until that show finds its footing. And the way how they tried to introduce even more mystery by adding Kai at the end, it just doesn't work. Overall, I think it's a weak episode and a pretty poor start. If this was my first introduction to Beyblade, I don't think I'd have the same nostalgia for it. Both this show and script have taken several years off my life. Time for episode 2. So the episode picks up just after the first one, with Tyson and Kai starting a battle with the Beyblades. Kai destroys Tyson's blade, yada yada, Kai bad, adds suspension. The voice acting isn't much better here, most of the dialogue seems massively off, such as Tyson screaming into the sky. I will say the pacing in this episode is better. It introduces Kai and his gang the Blade Sharks, and starts to show the individual members and what their goals are. And this episode seems to be doing a better job at introducing the mystery of Dragoon. It just doesn't feel like it's as crammed in as it was in the first episode. I also want to bring up how the Beyblades are animated. When they're in action it feels really boring. Like, they must have been a better way to do this. The animation is choppy with this really weird sound effect. It just kind of feels like someone's swinging a cable in the air. And comparing it to future iterations of Beyblades, the animation is done way better there so I don't know why they didn't do it here. Like, if it was that much of a struggle, they should have just rotoscoped it. Overall, this episode was pretty crappy, but still better than the first one. Episode 3 starts with them trying to improve Tyson's Beyblade, with yet another character being introduced. Already I feel like there's too many characters here, with many having no name, and most of them being forgettable. The main point of this episode is to show Tyson's cockiness and how eager he actually is. The new main character shown is Max. All that's shown about Max here is he's meant to be a Beyblade expert with his dad owning a hobby shop, and the main point of this character is that he's overly friendly and seems way too eager to help. Plot seems steady here, with him introducing elements such as tournament. This itself is used as a plot point for the next few episodes. Overall, this episode was enjoyable, but felt like it was slower paced in comparison to the first two. And it also has the same problem with poor voice acting and direction, with an example being Tyson's weird apology. Oh, and she? Huh? Sorry about before. I shouldn't have said all those things. Episode 4 starts off strong, with them introducing Beyblade as a sport. The voice acting also seems to get better here, but the voice direction is still a little weird and out of place. 
Other than the qualifying tournament and some tension building, nothing really happens here. That is until the end where they try to introduce yet another character. At this point the show's feeling like a crammed orgy of characters. Overall this episode's okay and I think this is where it starts to find its footing. This episode, episode 5, continues on with the qualifier tournament. It also introduces the mystery character from episode 4 who is known as Ray. The main plot point of this episode is that it shows Max discovering and using his bit beast seal. For context, the bit beasts are the monsters that are inside the Beyblades. But other than that, just like episode 4, nothing really happens here other than the tournament. A side note here, the music in this episode sucks, unlike the music in Opera. Beyblade, let it rip! Ready for a whole new way to spin? Two different frequencies go head to head. Beyblade RC puts you in control so you can call the shots. Beyblade RC sets starter sets of base data and marina each sold separately. Batteries not included. RC opponents require different frequencies. Just from these five episodes, I feel like there's a lot missing in translation. Especially because most of the time, what is said seems to make very little sense in terms of the context of the show. And on top of that, it seems like certain plot points of the show dragged on. But how does it compare to the original Japanese version? The first thing I notice about the sub is it starts off way more seriously than the English counterpart. Tyson's cockiness here is apparent from the outset, and it's also very clear that he wants to be a Beyblade champion. These traits in particular are shown a bit later in the English dub. There's also a lot less cringe here, with the rules of Beyblade being shown in a quicker and concise manner, and the pre-ed bumpers are more like Pokemon's increasing that connection. The most apparent thing is the absence of Dizzy. I think Dizzy might have been added to the English version to be kind of a Pokédex stand-in, but some people think it's to add a female into a mainly male-dominated cast. Overall, the Japanese version is better than the English. It has better character and plot direction, as well as better pacing. But what do I think of the English version? Overall, I think the English version is fine. It takes a while for it to find its feet, but it does have its own charm. If you want to go watch it for nostalgia's sake, it should be fine. But if you're new to Beyblade, go watch the Japanese version. Anyway, that's all for this video. Subscribe.